this is Haley from OneOneRabbits.com and today I'm going to be doing a video all about bonding rabbits. So in this video I'm going to try to cover as much as I can about bonding rabbits together. Of course I won't be able to cover it all as there's just so much information, but I hope I can help you guys at least a little bit in your bonding process. So these are the tips that you can take to properly bond your rabbit so that it sets you up for success. So the first step in bonding your rabbits is to have all the rabbits spayed and neutered. Rabbits who are not spayed and neutered have many health risks, but besides that, they are also very territorial and very aggressive. This is because they have a lot of hormones in them, it just causes them to start fights with one another, and it is very dangerous to bond rabbits who are not fixed. After your rabbits are spayed and neutered, you want to wait one month before introducing them. This helps especially with females who are healing, as they have a much harder healing process than males do. And also one month is approximately amount the time that it takes for a uh, rabbit's hormones to die down. So one thing that some people do is they do bunny dating. So if you currently have one rabbit and are looking for another one, a good way to set up a bond for success is to take your rabbit to a local shelter and do something called bunny dating. Pretty much what they do is you put both rabbits in a pen. Um, normally you're there like in the pen to stop any fighting or just for safety precautions and this just helps the rabbit, um, you and your rabbit know if this rabbit is right. So some good signs to look for when bunny dating is ignoring each other, grooming themselves or each other, laying down or turning away from the other rabbit. So some people might think that the rabbit should be cuddling or grooming, um, but that's a really unrealistic view to have when starting out bonding, especially just bunny dating. As the rabbits have just met, they have no trust and no bond with each other. Now these are wonderful signs that you could have while bunny dating, but it's kind of unrealistic to expect that all bunny dates are going to go this way. So the one thing that you probably want to keep an eye out when bunny dating is if the other rabbits are aggressively attacking each other. Um, this is a sign that it's probably going to be a hard bond if the rabbits are just going after each other, biting each other. Um, Rabbits can bond if they do that in the beginning, but it's a lot harder process and I would suggest um, looking for other um, rabbits at that point. So once you've brought your rabbit home and they're all spayed and neutered, you can start the pre-bonding process. So if you're not familiar with the term pre-bonding, pretty much what this means is um, you start the bonding process before the rabbits are actually interacting face to face. Um, so some things that you do while pre-bonding is switching cages. Um, this helps the rabbit um, get familiar with the other rabbit's scent. Um, if they're in the other rabbit's cage, they can sniff around. Um, a lot of times during pre-bonding and the bonding process, you will have a lot of marking and territorial pooping and peeing. This is completely normal. Just try to deal with it. Um, it's litter habits are gonna go out of control. Let's just put it that way. So you can also just switch their litter boxes or um, bedding like fleece, fleece and towels. Another thing to try is putting stuffed animals in each of the rabbit's cage and then switching them. Um, normally unbonded rabbits like stuffed animals to just groom and lay next to. Even my bonded rabbits love stuffed animals. So after the rabbit's been grooming and laying next to it for a while and just being in that other cage, if you switch the animals, um, the stuffed animals out, um, the stuffed animal will smell like the other rabbit. Um, this is really good as the rabbit can take out um, aggression or territorial um, stuff on the stuffed animal versus the rabbit. Um, once you do that for a while, the rabbit will start to get used to the stuffed animal's smell and things will start to die down. So once you feel comfortable enough to start the actual bonding process, the first step I would take is to start in a small area. Now every bonding process is going to be different because every single rabbit and every single rabbit's relationship is going to be different. But what works for a lot of rabbits is to start small and start with stress bonding. So stress bonding is when you have your rabbit in a stressful situation and um, this just helps 
because the rabbit is a little bit scared and it can help the rabbits cuddle together or look for each other for comfort. So I personally do my first session as a stress bonding session. Normally I start with a small basket on top of a dryer. Um, it just shakes a little bit, makes noises. Um, when I was bonding Mocha and Lulu, they huddled together. They literally didn't do anything. Some other stress bonding techniques that are very useful are um, putting your rabbits in a carrier. Um, now, if your rabbits have been in there before, make sure you clean it out really good so that it's a neutral territory. Um, if you put your rabbits together in an area that is not a neutral territory, um, one rabbit most likely will be dominant over that area and that can cause fighting. So something I did is I put my rabbits in a carrier and I just drove around. Um, I had my mom drive and I was sitting with the rabbits to make sure nothing bad happened. Car rides are probably one of the best stressing um, bonding sessions because almost every rabbit is terrified in the car. Um, so most likely they will not be fighting while in the car. Um, and they'll probably just be snuggling. Um, so that is a very, very good option if that's available to you. Another option is to just put the rabbit in a carrier or a basket and just shake it around. Um, of course, don't be too violent. You don't want to hurt your rabbits. Um, but just shaking it around and like walking around can also be stressful and um, can make the rabbits cuddle. Another stressful um, situation can be a bathtub or a shower. Um, this is a very slippery surface for a rabbit and so it can make it harder for the rabbits to um, pick on each other and it can also be a little bit scary for them. So stress bonding, there's a lot of different things. You just have to be creative when bonding and come up with different techniques um, and what works for you and your rabbit. So if you've done some stress bonding and your rabbits just kind of sit there and don't do anything, um, that means it's a sign to move on to the next step. Um, so the next step is to just gradually increase the space you allow your rabbits to have. So if you started in a basket, you would start in a small two by two pen or um, something smaller like that. Normally I go from a basket to the bathtub and then a bathtub to a pen. Um, that's just sort of how I do it. Now, um, once you increase the space, your rabbits most likely will get a little more aggressive again, a little more, um, probably a lot more humping. Um, this is normal, but if it's severely bad and it starts a fight, make sure that you take a step back and put them back into a stressor situation. So let's say you have your rabbits in the bathtub and um, they really will not start chasing, biting, um, and fighting. A thing of what to do is to put those rabbits in a, inside a basket or a carrier and just shake them up a little bit. This just helps calm them down and get their mind off of attacking each other. So once they're shaken up a little bit, put them back in the bathtub and go on with the session. If it's just really, really bad and it's not getting better, that's a sign that you've moved to the next step too quickly and it's probably time that you go back to a smaller area. So I'm just going to tell you some signs um, to look for in your rabbits that show that they're ready to move on to the next step and increase the space. And I'm also going to be telling you some signs that show that you increase the space um, too quickly and you need to take a step back. Um, so first of all, um, good signs are obviously the ones I already mentioned. Um, if they're sitting there ignoring each other the whole time and it's super boring, that means that it's time to spice things up a little bit and move to a larger area. Remember when you're bonding, start out small and start out with like five minutes, 10 minutes, something very short. Um, as they become more comfortable with each other, you can increase the time. Um, to one to four hours, like you can do very long bonding sessions. Um, but once they start to get boring, make sure that you increase the space so that you're not just sitting there and doing nothing. <laughs> Some signs that means that you've just moved on too quickly are um, if your rabbits are constantly going after each other, constantly biting, constantly bickering, constantly trying to fight, constantly chasing. Um, this means that you've probably moved on too fast and you should probably take a step back, go back to some stress bonding or smaller areas where they're more relaxed. So now I'm gonna talk about a few different situations that you will see when bonding and how to deal with them. 
The first one I'm going to talk about is humping. This is a very common thing when bonding. I can almost guarantee you that you're going to see your rabbits hump each other. So this humping is not sexual. This is um, a dominance thing. Your rabbit is trying to say, hey, I'm dominant, let me be dominant over you. So if your rabbits are humping each other, a lot of times your instinct is to be like, oh my goodness, I need to separate them, I need to get them off the other rabbit, I can't have them do this, this looks stressful. But this is actually making your bonding process a lot worse. The more that you're in there and messing around with it, the longer it's gonna to take to bond them. I found that with my first bond, I was always in there. I was always having my hands in there and like hovering and protecting them. Um, but this just made the process a lot longer. And um, I know it's hard, but what you have to do when you bond is just take a step back and let them figure it out themselves because that's honestly what's gonna help them bond faster. So if your rabbits are humping each other, let them do it. The only time you should stop humping is if it's leading to some, like really bad chasing to the point where the chasing is turning into fighting. Another time that you would want to stop humping is if the rabbit is humping the other rabbit's head. This is dangerous because the rabbit underneath could bite their um, private area and cause a lot of damage. So um, that is not an okay thing to let them do. The only other time you should stop humping is if it um, is leading to a fight or something like that, then obviously you should um, stop them. Another thing that you will probably experience when bonding is your rabbits are going to be biting each other. Um, <laughs> now this is a scary thing to experience, especially if you've never bonded rabbits before and never had um, two rabbits. Um, but I think you have to understand that rabbits do not communicate through um, vocal. They do not really vocalize anything. They're not like cats and dogs who will bark and growl. Um, now rabbits do have the capability to grunt and growl a little bit, um, so sometimes you will hear that in the bonding process, um, but a lot of the times their actions are through, um, their communications is through their actions. So biting is going to happen and although it's not something that I would encourage, um, it's definitely not something that is horrible. Two of my rabbits have been bonded for around five years now and they still bite each other. It's just the way they communicate. Um, so you have to distinguish um, between biting as aggressive and biting as in, hey, move over, I wanna get through. Another thing that you're probably going to encounter when bonding is um, a fight. Um, now, when I was bonding Mocha and Lulu, I think I only had two fights throughout the whole bonding process. So if you encounter a fight, first thing is to stay calm. Um, I know that's really hard. Um, I normally freak out when I see a fight. Um, the second thing is to not get in the middle of it. I think probably the best thing is a dustpan. And what I do is I just like shove it between the rabbits so that literally if they keep fighting they're just biting the dustpan and it's not gonna hurt anything it's not gonna hurt you it's not gonna hurt them um, that's probably the best way also it keeps your hands out of it it keeps you out of it and um, that's a very important thing with bonding so now I'm gonna talk about how to end a bonding session so whether this is your first bonding session and it is only a couple minutes long or if it's your last one of your last bonding sessions and it's four hours long. Um, these are just some tips on how to end them. Um, first of all, never end a bonding session on a fight. This will, um, your rabbit will remember that and next time your rabbits see each other, they're gonna think negatively about the other rabbit. So you never wanna end on a bad note. You don't wanna end when they're fighting, bickering, um, anything like that. Um, and a good place to end a bonding session is any of the good signs I mentioned before, ignoring each other, grooming, all that stuff, that's a really good time to end a bonding session. If your bonding session is just not going well um, and it's in the beginning of the process, they're still not used to each other um, and they're still like bickering a lot, a good way to bond it, um, to end a session is to put them into a stressful uh, stress session again, shake them up in a basket so that they're huddling together. Um, that is a good sign. They're not fighting, they're not bickering, they're just cuddled. Another way to end a session is to 
force snuggles, which is where you push the rabbits together and pet their heads. Um, that's a really good thing to do. And last but not least is the cementing process. After your rabbits have been bonding for a while and things are getting pretty boring, it's probably a sign that they should have their first sleepover. So they call this the cementing process as it's cementing their bond together. And um, during this process, um, your rabbits will be spending the night together. Um, what I do is I set up a 4x4 pen in a neutral area, or as neutral as I can get it. Um, I normally put it in the living room. I sleep on the couch that night so that I will wake up if I hear any fighting. Normally during the cementing process, I don't really have any issues in the middle of the night. Normally they're just kind of chill. Um, if you've been bonding long enough, most likely they're more comfortable enough with each other that they're not going to do anything. So, um, cementing process has normally been pretty easy for me. Um, and so once they've cemented in that pen for two nights, you can clean their cage very, very well and put them in the cage together. Um, normally once I put the rabbits in the cage, they're pretty much fine by that point and love each other. So. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about that process. If something did go wrong and they start majorly fighting in the middle of the night, um, just make sure you end the session on a good note and um, by force snuggling or a stress and then put them in separate cages that night. Um, it just means they weren't ready. So that's pretty much it for this video. I know I didn't cover everything, um, but it's kind of impossible to cover everything with bonding because every situation is different um, and I can't go through every possibility. So if you have any further questions, you can leave them down below. I will try to get back to them, um, but sometimes, you know, I just get so many comments I can't. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and please remember not to get too stressed out during this process. Um, and I will see you guys soon on a new video. Bye.